On today's show, we're going to learn how to do a 4K live crop. That's where you take a 4K signal and output a 1080p image, but crop and zoom and pan into the shot all at the same time. Today we are talking about how to do something called 4K live cropping in your camera, in your Lumix camera. Now, I, I honestly don't know how far this extends beyond other camera brands. I don't know if this is unique to the Panasonic Lumix lineup or if it's something that is in all cameras that, uh, at least all mirrorless cameras. I really don't know. If you find it in your camera, awesome. You're going to learn how to use it, how to take advantage of it, why you might want to use it. And if you don't, well, then maybe it's time to step up and get a Lumix. Uh, so the whole idea here is you have when you have a 4k shot but you're outputting 1080p then you have a lot of wiggle room you can take that shot and zoom into it push into it you can pan around it you can do a lot of things in post and everything i'm going to show you today you can absolutely do in post if you're delivering 1080p you could just shoot 4k and then do everything we're going to do here in software in final cut in resolve in premiere whatever you're using um heck you could probably even do it in iMovie it's pretty straightforward which would beg the question so why would you even bother doing this in camera why not just do it in post and that's a fair fair question i think that sometimes it's just better just nicer just easier just cleaner to do it in camera you get your idea down, you know exactly what you're doing, you know exactly what your output's going to be, you can reshoot it if it's something you can reshoot until you get it exactly right, and, and then you have the shot. You have the shot as it is, as it's going to go onto your timeline. So that's the argument here. Again, you can just do this in post if, it's, if that's more straightforward, if you prefer to work that way, but we're going to take a look at the feature and how it is in here and how you can do it in camera. One advantage I'd say for doing it in camera too is especially if you're going to do something for social media, you want to shoot a clip really quick, push it over to your phone or tablet and push it up on social, then you can do all of that in camera, which is, which is kind of nice. So here's how we set it up. It's really straightforward. If my camera is set to 4K, so let's just say I'll set it to any 4K mode in here. Uh, we'll do that one. And then I enable the 4K live cropping. Let me just, I'm just going to turn it on. I'm not going to set it yet. I'm just going to back out of here now that it's on. You'll notice that this has now dropped down to full HD, to 1080p. So your output, even if you set your camera to 4K, you're shooting 4K, and then you say, hey, I'm going to do a 4K live crop, your camera will automatically drop down to 1080p. That's because we are cropping up to 1080, we're, we're cropping to 1080p, we're zooming in to one-to-one -one if we want to from that sensor, so we can only output 1080p. It's not going to scale it back up. That would be awful. We go into, into the 4K live cropping, and it's pretty straightforward. You have, well, you can turn it off. You have a 20 second and a 40 second time push. So that means that it's going to do the shot over 20 seconds or over 40 seconds. So you can't do 10, you can't do 12, you can't do 36 seconds. It's exactly set to that. So that is a limitation of this, but, uh, but you know, it is what it is. So I'll set it to 20 seconds. And I have a very simple setup to start. We're gonna, just gonna keep this really, really simple to start. I have two items sitting here on the table, two flashes. We're just gonna set this up and do a simple pan across. Really, really straightforward. We'll look at this view. Uh, you can see up in the top left corner, it says start. So right now I'm choosing my starting position. I can change the size of the push using the scroll wheel. I can drag it around on screen using my thumb, my fingers. I can pinch in and out of it to change the size. I can, you know, I can change the size however I want. So I'm gonna size this a little bit bigger right over that flash. And that's my starting point. So I hit set to set my start point. Now you notice up in the top left, it says end. So I position this to my ending point and I'm gonna move it over and kind of zoom into the controller there. And we'll set that as the ending point. And that's it. And now I just hit the record button. And from there, it is going to automatically start the shot. It zooms in, or crops in rather, does the shot, starts doing the pan and away we go. And that's, that's it, right? That is all there is to it. You can see it doing the push in, so it's kind of zooming in a little bit. You can see that it's obviously panning, and that's it. I mean, that's really all there is to it. Super, super straightforward. One of the things about this mode is the only autofocus mode that it, it works in, and it just kind of automatically defaults to this, is face detection. So I've been doing a lot of playing with it, a lot of testing with it, and seeing where the autofocus can work in this regard. In a shot like this, where there's no faces in there, it's actually not really doing autofocus. It's not finding that the subject distance has changed. So if you have a subject that's closer and farther away, it actually is not going to change that focus for you. You can do it manually. So you could be in manual focus and be slowly racking your focus. You cannot combine it with the autofocus racking feature in here in 4C. That was, that's something I was really hoping you can't do that. But if you're doing something with people, the face detection autofocus will actually work 
pretty well. So we've got something set up for that. So, uh, hey, Vanna White, you want to come out here for a moment for me? We've got to... We're gonna set up here. Vanna White, is that because my hair's going gray? <laughs> no, Vanna's not going gray, is she? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you are all well familiar with my good man, Sean Mark Nipper. Hello in the back there. He's, hello, he's hello. there and out of, I'm blocking him. He, <laughs> can you try and, there we go. We are looking at this shot here. So I'm gonna set up a whole new shot. So I will do it like this. I will first go in and just reset, kind of the way you reset it is you just go in and choose your timing again. And I'm gonna start the first shot wide, all the way wide. So we're gonna have Sean all the way in the back there wide. It hit set, and now it asks for the end. Sean, why don't you come up to your, your final mark here? So he's going to be right about there, so I'll position this over his face like so. So it's going to be a walk and talk while he's coming towards the camera, and the camera is going to be pushing into it. So we're set. Uh, go ahead and walk back to your first position. All right. And now I'm ready to go. I'm just going to hit record on the camera. And Make go sure ahead and come on in, John. You're, you're good. Mark there. So go, you, you can start walking now. So he's, I'm supposed to be counting, like there's five seconds, six. And you know, obviously uh, he would be talking and gesticulating and, and being Sean. You can see the face detection as he gets closer, it finds him, it grabs onto him. Um, and there's, it's you actually gonna do a pretty good job of, uh, of tracking his face all the way in there. We are of course using the latest firmware on the camera. Uh, and there we go, so that's that. So now let's play it back. So we, we're not gonna hear any audio from the camera here, but you can see he's walking in, it's zooming in. It's got him, it's, I think it's holding onto his focus pretty well. This is the 12 millimeter lens. It is wide open. So as he gets closer, we're gonna see a little bit of the bokeh in the background there. So we have managed to bring in that shot from this wide shot to the zoomed in tighter shot while he's walking towards the camera and done it all in camera. Again, yes, you can do this in post, but sometimes it's just cleaner, better, more fun. I don't know, just doing it in camera, I kind of like. So that's it. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate you're your welcome. help today. Thank you very much for tuning into this, folks. If you have any questions about what you've just seen, we are, and you're watching live, we are going to jump into the live portion of the Q&A show right now. And if, of course, you are not watching live, then drop them into the questions down below, and I'll do my best to get to them.